Now, because I'm using electric heat here, I wanted to be able to track what my actual electrical usage was. So I bought a secondhand analog utility meter. Uh, this is the kind of thing that uh, most people used to have on their houses, and now we usually have digital ones. So the old ones ended up on the secondhand market. They're out there, you can buy them. Uh, it wasn't too expensive, it was pretty easy to hook up. And this is good for 240 volts at, uh, I believe this one's up to 200 amps. So I have that wired up to the heater here. And then it acts essentially like an odometer. The number just keeps going up, you can't reset it. So what I do is I simply write down that number, oh, once a month or every once in a while, anytime I'm doing anything special with the heat, and then I can track the total power usage of the heat separate from the rest of my electric bill. Now you might see that up by the uh, temperature and pressure relief valve, things are, are a little bit of a mess. Uh, the reason for that is after I originally put this all together, I had a little bit of uh, a leak. I had to rework one part and uh, it, this was a little bit of a work to fill. Uh, the other thing I found out is when you're pressurizing the system, uh, f actually filling it up originally, it's easy to over pressure, um, you know, running a little bit higher than what you normally would, and this thing can pop open and make a mess. Uh, the other spot that I actually had trouble is uh, pretty much all the parts on here, you know, they're, they're brass, they're metal, they're uh, stainless steel, they're all pretty good components, with the exception of this Y strainer here. Um, the components on it are plastic, and I actually did get a little teeny, teeny, tiny crack uh, right in there. So for a while, I had a little bit of a slow leak uh, that dropped the pressure a little bit, and once the pressure dropped, that stopped leaking. So it hasn't been an issue, but it's something I, I keep an eye on. Um, that glycol is blue, and when it, um, it drips on something and dries, you, you will find it. It will leave a mark. In terms of challenges that I had with the system, uh, probably the biggest one was actually just uh, filling it in the first place, filling it with glycol. Um, first of all, make sure you have the right pump. Make sure you have a good pump, one that's powerful enough and preferably self-priming. Um, I had a pump, so I thought I could just use that. Well, it turned out it wasn't quite as powerful as what I needed and it wasn't self-priming, so I was trying to pour glycol in to get it started and oh man, it was just uh, really a lot of work. Um, I did go through uh, several gallons of glycol to fill the system. Uh, when you design your system in the first place, uh, you'll get a little bit of math. You'll actually know ahead of time exactly how much glycol you're going to need. Um, you can buy it typically in one gallon containers or five gallon buckets. Uh, for me, um, I need a little bit less than five gallons, but there was a price break, so it, it made sense just to buy a five gallon bucket. Kind of one of the big things to remember here is that this is a pretty serious plumbing project. Um, I really did not have much experience with plumbing at all, uh, definitely not uh, sweating pipes together. So when I did do all the soldering of the copper pipes on the system, um, I practiced. I just practiced on a few scrap pieces until I, I felt like I was confident enough to know what I was doing. Even then, I still had one joint that was bad and I had to go back and fix later, which was not ideal because I already had glycol in it. So that uh, got to be a little bit of a mess. I had to drain and refill the system. I could have gotten around that by buying one of those uh, pre-built radiant heating panels, but at the same time, one of those cost about twice as much. One thing to keep in mind with uh, this style of a heating system was because there's uh, so much mass from the concrete, it is slow to heat up, but then it's also uh, slow to cool down. So I'm trying to take advantage of that. Uh, because I'm in a garage, I figured any time I'd open the garage door to bring a car in or a car out, any hot air I would have in here would just whoosh, go right out the garage door. By having the concrete heated, even if, if the air gets cooled down very quickly, uh, it's a very small uh, percentage of the total heat because of all that nice mass of the concrete that's still going to uh, right away start rewarming the air. Now, on the other hand, let's say I didn't want to heat the garage all week, but on the weekend in the winter, I wanted to go out here and work on some project. Um, I can't really just come out here, flip on the heat and go, hey, I'm warm. No, it, it takes a while to heat up. So if I want to work out here on a Saturday or Sunday, I might turn the heat on Thursday night. Uh, the other thing is I'm just as likely to turn the heat off um, once I'd be working out here on a weekend. Um, in fact, it's actually easy to overshoot the temperature. If I look at the thermostat and I see what temperature it is and I go, 
uh, okay, that's great. I'd really like it a few degrees warmer in here. I know it's still going to get warmer because the concrete's still going to continue to radiate that heat. Now, one of the other things that I always planned for my garage is if you look around down here, there actually aren't any windows. I did that for a couple of reasons. One is a window is basically a hole in the wall letting the heat out. So by not having any windows, I actually have better insulation. I'm also right next to a road, so I get a lot of traffic noise right there. Um, not having any windows means it's quieter in here. And I shoot videos in here. It's nice to be able to have control over the lighting. If I had windows, I wouldn't have much control over the lighting. But at the same time, it doesn't let in any natural light. But this was actually part of my master plan um, so in the time since I originally designed the hydronic heating system, I also built a, kind of a patio door for one of my two insulated garage doors. So all I have to do then is I open my garage door and right there I've got a plexiglass window that on a nice sunny winter day, it lets the sunlight in, that warms up the concrete. Uh, it's actually a passive heating system. I guess one of the core concepts that I learned about by learning about heating, whether it's hydronic or anything else, uh, is the concept of delta T. Uh, we often see that as kind of a triangle symbol and a capital letter T. Uh, it means difference in temperature. Because when it comes down to it, it really doesn't matter what the temperature is outside, what the temperature is inside. It's what's the difference between the two of those, because that's what we have to make up through either heating or cooling. Uh, and once you wrap your mind around delta T, it starts to make all the various calculations make a lot more sense. Uh, it also makes you think about insulating a whole lot more because insulation uh, slows that transfer of heat. So when we heat the place, we keep our heat in. Or even in the summer, in a hot climate, when you insulate, you help keep that heat outside. Uh, so insulating is always, always, always a good thing to do. Well, that's about it from me here today. I hope that sharing about how I did my project uh, will encourage you on yours, whether you're a, a hardcore do-it-yourself or tackling something like this literally from the ground up, or if you're going to hire a contractor but you just want to learn more about the system, uh, know what it is that they're going to be doing and what kind of work that is. Uh, I do have a number of other videos about the hydronic heat in my garage, the overall construction of my garage, and even the photovoltaic system. Uh, I have quite a bit of information about how I design my own solar system to produce electricity for my garage, my electric car, and my home. So I hope you check those out as well. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please comment, share, like, and subscribe. We're also now on Patreon, so we'd love to have your support there as well. Until next time, stay charged up. Hydron, hy, hydronic, hydronic.